Hi guys, Darth Deuce here with another Transformers figure review. Going to be taking a look at the other Wave 1 Voyager Class Siege figure that has been released recently, and it is the Voyager Class Megatron figure. Um, I got Optimus, so I wanted the Megatron to go with the Optimus. Um, and I'm happy I did. Uh, I wasn't expecting to like this Megatron figure as much as I do. It is pretty good. So here he's in vehicle mode, and he's just a Cybertronian tank, which is a fitting alt mode for him on Cybertron. And it looks pretty cool. Um, it's a kind of H-style tank. It reminds me of, like the Scorpion tanks from Halo. Uh, and it's really cool. I really like the big cannon on the turret and all the paint apps, the silver, red, and gunmetal colors look really good. There's not a whole lot of extra kibble on the vehicle mode. I mean, it's a little ugly if you turn it upside down, as you can see, but for the most part... He looks pretty good. I like the painted yellow lights there. Looks really good as well. Um, he does have wheels on the bottom, so you can roll the tank mode. And you can actually rotate the turret, which is pretty cool as well. I like that. Always a nice feature on tank figures. And he's a decent size and a decent heft as well for being a Voyager class. There's not a whole lot of hollowness to this figure, which is pretty great as well. Put him down here real quick. I'll do a quick comparison. Here he is with his Voyager class counterpart, Optimus Prime. As you can see in vehicle mode, Megatron is a bit bigger. Um, he's slightly longer. Well, with a turret, with the gun, he's much longer. And he's also a bit wider and bulkier as well, which I think makes sense, obviously, comparing a truck-like vehicle to a tank. Anyway, that's pretty much it to talk about for the vehicle mode for Megatron. I'm not going to show the transformation. Uh, there's other reviews if you really need to see it, but they are also, the transformation is not very hard, um, so if you follow the instructions, it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to get him in robot mode, and we'll take a close look at Megatron. Alright, now we have Megatron in his robot mode, and again, really solid robot mode. Uh, I really like how this looks a lot. He's pretty bulky, he's got that very G1 look, but still having its own Cybertronian take on the design. And it's just a really solid figure overall. Um, there's not a whole lot of kibble from the tank mode. Um, you do have the backpack here, but it's not that bad. It looks decent. And from the IDW comics, uh, the Cybertronian uh, version of Megatron actually, if I remember correctly, had tank treads as a backpack as the actual design in robot mode. So this doesn't bother me too much. Everything tabs in pretty good. And there's no real problems there as well. Um... Taking a look at the head sculpt. The head sculpt's pretty great. I really like the silver paint on it. You got some black and the red is quite striking for the eyes. I do feel like his helmet, I guess you could say, is a bit too flared outwards. But aside from that, I think it looks pretty good. You got a lot of nice silver paint apps and red paint apps throughout the figure. You also have that silver battle damage, uh, which I do personally like. I think it looks pretty decent. I know there's some people who don't like it at all, but I like it. Um, but I have heard if you do want to get rid of it, you can take some rubbing alcohol and carefully wipe it away if you so choose. The Decepticon logo is nice and cleanly applied and all the paint here looks really clean as well. On the legs here you have more of that battle damage or battle wear and tear. The legs look pretty good. You have some heels to keep them standing upright. And there's not much else to talk about. It's just a really good looking, really solid Megatron figure. In terms of articulation, he has a ball joint the head, which doesn't look up too much. Can look up a lot more, but it's because of this panel that moves up, so that looks ridiculous. Uh, same thing with down. It can't really look down, but if you can put it in, but then he's burying his chin into his chest. He moves his arms out. You can rotate them. You can rotate them. The elbows at the uh, swivel joint here. A hinge that only goes to 9 degrees. No wrist swivel, which is a... Not the worst thing in the world, but I would have liked if this figure had that. Swivel at the waist. Swivel at the hips. You can move up that far. Move back a decent amount. Kick all the way out. Rotation at the thigh. Single hinge at the knee. And a pivot at the ankle, which actually locks into place in the straight. But then you can unlock it, and then you can hinge it. So, it's a little tricky to get it locked back in, I will say. But, uh... Like so, like that, but it adds, the pivot's really nice, it lets you get a lot more poses out of this figure. 
In terms of accessories, he comes with two accessories. You have his fusion cannon here. You can unplug that. You don't have to unplug it for the transformation, though, which is nice. But you can unplug that if you want. But the fusion cannon looks really nice. It's nice and bulky like it should be. It has a decent presence on his arm and doesn't have a weird shape to it. It looks really good. It has a lot of nice sculpt and detail and isn't hollow as well. Usually they like to hollow out like one side to... That's a practice they like to do, but they didn't do it with this one. It makes it look a lot better, so I like that a lot. You also get this giant sword, or whatever mega launcher thing that they call it. It's a giant sword, but it's also the cannon in tank mode. So the cannon in tank mode is actually also storage for his sword weapon, which is really cool. You can do some different things with this. You know, you can hold it like a sword, obviously. Uh, he has multiple ports on his body, so like on the arm you can do... Wrist mounted blade, if you wanted to. Um, you can store it on his back with ports on his back, like so, and that's relatively out of the way. So that's pretty good if you don't want him to hold it. Or what you can do, one of the features is you can put it in the end of the fusion cannon. This is supposed to be like his me mega crazy gun, uh, but it's overly large and ridiculous looking, of course. Uh huh. But that is something you can do if you want to. So that's pretty cool. I like having him just hold it. I think it worked. the sword worked well for Megatron. It kind of goes back to his gladiatorial roots in the IDW continuity, so I do like that. In terms of a little comparison here, I'll quickly compare him with Optimus Prime from the same wave. So here he is with next to Optimus. And they scale really well together. They're about the same height each. Megatron's a bit bulkier, but they're both about the same height. And I think they both scale really well together, and... They are a lot of fun to pose around together and photograph together and all that sort of stuff. Um, these are a pair of really great figures. I think I personally prefer Optimus a little more. Um, he has a bit better articulation. I like Optimus' character more. Um, and I think it's just a bit more solid. But this Megatron figure is still really good and shouldn't be overlooked. Um, so if you're collecting the new Siege line, or you're looking for a mass retail G1 sort of uh, modern Megatron figure. I think this is a great one to pick up. Um, it's really solid. Articulation's pretty good. Accessories are good. I don't have any major complaints with it at all. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I see you all in the next video.